Hi, I'm Louise. I'm an artist. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm walking you through everything I use for my charcoal drawings. Everything charcoal related, charcoal adjacent, what papers I use, what my workspaces look like. I have two, two workspaces and also what I recommend for beginners, like the bare basics that you need to get started with charcoal. Look at that. It is almost October and it's my very favorite month of the year, so I'm very excited. Let's start here. Let's start with my seated workstation because this is where I'm usually at. And what I have done, because charcoal is very messy, it's a very messy medium. And for some weird reason, this room is so white. It's, guys, look, white ceiling, whitish walls, curtains that are white and everything, floors white, which is just a nightmare. <laughs> and yeah, everything here is white um, for some reason that I can't explain. I will probably do something about that one day. But what I have done is that I've put, this is just a cut off piece of, I think it's like bed linen or something. I just cut off a piece of it and, and and put it here because this collects um, residue and smudges a lot better than this white desk does. So it's much easier to, like it sticks to the fabric. And then I can usually just wipe this off or I can vacuum it. It works pretty well for me. That's why I put it. And also to like protect the desk because this, this is one of those laptop tables that you have, like that you can have in bed. <laughs> I have never used it for that. I just use it as like a desk augment to to get my my drawing surface tilted more towards me so I don't warp my drawings. And it's great because you can set it at different angles and and it's black, which is a lot more conducive to what I am doing here. So that's my setup. And here is where I have my iPad where I keep my references. And this one is mounted on the windowsill, so, you know, when I am erasing and doing stuff here, it won't wobble the camera too much. So yeah, that's the seated workstation. I also have a standing workstation here that I'm experimenting with a little bit. I haven't, I haven't used it too much because I am lazy and I like to sit down while I work, but this is, um... One of those drawing pads that you can buy um, fairly cheaply online. It has clips to fasten your paper onto. And this is just a studio easel. Once again, some fabric to cover up because when you work with like compressed, compressed charcoal and vine charcoal, it gets a lot of powder residue that's gonna just trickle down and collect in little heaps <laughs> down here. And then I've just put my whole pad of newsprint paper here and I will get into paper in just a little while. So yeah, that's the, that's the workstations that I'm currently using. Now let's get into the actual supplies, the art materials. What paper do you use for charcoal drawing? Well, I usually just use regular drawing paper. This one is white. It's fairly... it has a little bit of texture but not not too much. I know there are charcoal paper, like paper for charcoals and pastels that have this really rough surface with lines on them and stuff and I am not really a fan of that look. I prefer to use smoother paper so this is just a drawing pad. Um, 180 GSM and pretty smooth but with a little bit of texture which makes the charcoal stick better to the paper because if you use really really smooth paper like this newsprint here this is very 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 smooth has basically no texture at all and it's super thin as you can see um, it makes it harder for the charcoal to stick to the paper this is my practice paper i use it for just really quick um, quick practice sketches, uh, nothing too fancy because, I mean, look how easily they they tear. 
This is the kind of paper that you just, you know, you, you make failed drawings on and then you just crumple them up and throw them away. <laughs> I think it's important to have like fancy paper for when you really want to do some good work and then just some throwaway, really cheap sketching paper for when you just want to practice. Anyways, so back to papers. I use this one. I also have started using toned paper, which I love. This paper is slightly thinner than, than this drawing paper, but I think that this is the perfect, like the perfect thickness and the perfect coarseness too. It's pretty smooth, but it has just enough texture to make, to make the charcoal stick to it. And you can see some of my Work that I have done here on this is kind of spoiler territory because I am currently working on drawing my favorite villains <laughs> for some upcoming videos but here are the ones I've done so far and I've mostly done them on toned paper because I enjoy not starting from a white surface as you can see here I started this on white that the white drawing paper that I showed you and I don't know, it just creates a, a different look. The white that I use here is from chalk. So I basically have my, my mid-tones set from the beginning and then I just draw in the shadows. Um, and then at the end, I add the highlights with chalk and white charcoal, which I'll show you in just a little bit. Those are the three primary types of paper that I draw on. Now let's get to the actual drawing drawing supplies. There are different types of charcoal. You have you have your charcoal pencils, for example, and this is compressed charcoal, which means that it has some binders and additives added to it to make it harder um, or like to control the hardness and softness of the charcoal and make it stick together better. Um, you also have compressed compressed charcoal. I don't want to touch these because I'm gonna <laughs> get smudges all over me, but these are various types of compressed charcoal. And this is chalk. This is just regular like school, school board chalk. And then there is sometimes called white charcoal. I don't know what it actually is. Maybe it's just chalk. Maybe a little bit more pastelli in its consistency. Then there is also vine charcoal or willow charcoal, sometimes also called soft charcoal. And it's like the, the, the raw, like the raw untreated stuff. Natural charcoal, soft charcoals. <laughs> Everyone calls it different things. They're usually a bit like crooked and twisted and, and here you can even see like that this used to be a stick. <laughs> it used to be a stick of wood, which I think is pretty cool. And here it is just one of my little hacks for not getting smudge all over my hands. It's just, I take a piece of tissue paper and I wrap it around and then just put a little bit of painter's tape around it. And then it makes it easier to draw with and, and to hold without getting smudgy. And also, what is really cool is that I can put it into one of these. This is a pencil lengthener, but I like to use it. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. <laughs> Look at that. So I just, I just stick it in there like that. And then I can have some, you know, better length on my pencil. So the thing about willow or vine charcoal, which this is, is that it's really soft and it's really easy to erase and it creates like a different look. Uh, it doesn't get as dark as compressed charcoal does. It's really great for that, that first, the first stage of a drawing when you're not really ready to commit. You're just trying to f like sketch out the form and the, find the proportions. And you can do that with vine and very easily erase and readjust. And, and then once you have something that you like, you can go in with compressed charcoal or charcoal pencils and you can 
get those really deep darks and get your lines to stick better to the paper because vine charcoal doesn't really stick that well. It smudges very easily. I've done a lot of drawings with only vine charcoal because I just like the look of it. Here we have some other additional stuff. We have charcoal powder and this is probably the messiest thing that I have in my studio right now. I don't use it a lot at the moment. I used charcoal powder to like tone the background of the paper. You can do a lot of cool things with this. You can probably like use it together with water as well and you can create like cool cool textures on the paper and stuff but yeah I'm not really using it right now. We also have some sharpen pencil sharpening tools here. You've probably seen one of these before. It's uh, like a pad, pad of sandpaper which I don't think works very well for me. I kind of prefer my DIY solution that I have before that, uh, which is just one of those sandpaper... I don't know, what, what do you call these? It's like I bought it from a hardware store and it's kind of a sponge underneath. It's a, it's a, a sponge covered in sandpaper, which I think works a lot better and I, I just stick my pencils down there and I sharpen them. What else do we have here? We have, we have some more compressed charcoal there that I'm not currently using. This is one of those gloves that I've seen some people use, some people who draw with charcoal that just covers your little finger and your ring finger. I haven't really seen the purpose of using these because you're just gonna get smudgy anyway but the difference is you're not going to see how smudgy you are. So I prefer to just see it like on my, see the smudges on my hand so I can do something about it. Um, and then we also have some, some of these. We also have some of these little sponges that come with pan pastel, which is the next thing that I'm going to show you. Pan pastel isn't technically charcoal. It's, well, pastel. <laughs> it's soft pastel. But I only use the black variety and it both it both functions like and it really looks like charcoal. It looks kind of like vine charcoal in that it doesn't get entirely black, it just gets like a really dark grey. I'm obsessed about this. <laughs> I love it so much because it's easy to work with and I don't have to get my fingers all dirty. I can use one of these palette knives that come with it with these little spongy replaceable tips. There are several of these. There is the triangular shaped, a more a more oval shaped, and a square shaped one. If you're interested in this, check out my other videos. I will link them in the description. And then we have the erasers, of course, um, with the most important one being this needed eraser. They are invaluable not only because you can mold them to different shapes but they also don't leave any residue. Most of the time I use a needed eraser for my my drawing and especially for erasing like larger areas um, or tiny areas. I mean you can you can form a very fine tip with this and, and really just get tiny little areas, brighten up tiny little areas, um, depending on what kind of charcoal you use. If you're using charcoal pencils and compressed charcoal, you're gonna need something more heavy duty, <laughs> uh, which is what I use this one for. I use this to erase darker strokes and darker areas and to create like really crisp highlights. And I also have one of these which is a mechanical eraser with a very fine tip. And this one is really great for those tiny crisp highlights. And then we have the blending tools, starting with the blending stumps. These paper paper stumps <laughs> that you that you use to blend out your lines and your areas. I, I use them pretty sparingly only to soften the lines of my charcoal pencils. I also use tissue paper sometimes for smudging like backgrounds and larger areas. But to be honest, most of the time I just use my hands. I prefer to use my hands to blend and like feel, 
feel the drawing with my hands. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but I just like the sensory experience of, of drawing and painting. And this, by the way, used to be a brush. <laughs> it's just a brush handle and I use it to like protect my protect my drawing from my hand when I go in and draw little details, for example. So I rest my palm on this one. Then we have the final piece of the puzzle when you are making charcoal art, and that is fixative. Low odor. <laughs> yeah, right. This one stinks. Danger, danger. <laughs> I don't like using this at all. To be honest, a lot of my, most of my drawings don't have fixative on them. Only the ones that I'm really proud of and that I have stashed in my portfolio. Those are like the only ones that I have used fixative on. Here is an example of a vine charcoal only drawing, 2021. It just looks so good in charcoal. Yeah, here's here's one where I've used charcoal powder. This whole background is I've just like sprinkled charcoal powder and then rubbed it in with my hands. Same here. And on this one as well. And on this one as well. So yeah. But you, you, you do need fixative if you're going to like frame or sell or stash your drawings and you don't want them to smudge and be destroyed. And I have another video on, on this channel all about charcoal. It's called Everything I Know About Charcoal in One Video, where I show you how exactly I use fixative. And then, of course, you need some way to deal with all of the dirt and the smudge. And the best way that I have found to do that is this is a mixture of just water and dishwashing liquid. And whenever I see a smudge somewhere, I usually start out by, this is just one of those microfiber cloths. I usually start out by just, let's see if I can find a smudge. Here we go. So I usually start out by just dry, using this one dry. And usually things come off pretty easily. I can get like the worst smudges off, but as you can see, there's still some of it left. And that's when I just spray some of this on. And then, ta-da, works really well. So it is possible to have a charcoal drawing practice and still have a tidy, clean, environment around you. So let's talk about what you what you need to just get started as a beginner. What I recommend is that you get some type of paper, try out different different types of paper. Maybe you like smoother paper like me or you like like the more traditional charcoal pastel paper. Try newsprint paper. It's usually very cheap and you can just draw and draw and draw and throw away as much as you want and not worry about the cost or anything. Then you probably want to get vine charcoal or willow charcoal. It's just really moldable and very forgiving. I felt that it really made it easier for me to start learning charcoal, to use something that I knew that I could always erase easily and just redo and, and move around and smudge really easily. That's probably the first type of charcoal that you want to get. And then you will probably also want a set of pencils. Usually they come in packs of three, like with a soft and a medium and a hard. Sometimes there's a white pencil in there as well. If you're using toned paper, it might be fun to have some chalk or white pastel. You can also use white pastel for that. And then maybe just a set of compressed charcoals, like little sticks, crayons, <laughs> and some erasers. <laughs> That's all you need to get started. If you want to learn more about charcoal, take a look at my other videos about it. I'm going to create a playlist and I'm going to link it down in the description for you with all of my charcoal related videos that I've made so far. That was the tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the stuff I'm using or my thoughts behind it or whatever, just ask them in the comments and I will see you in some other video. Bye.